Hi guys, my name is Matt Cummings and I just recently graduated Inglemore High School as the Vice President of DECA there. I've been in DECA for three years and in the past three years I've competed in Innovation Plan junior and senior year. In junior year I took six at Nationals and senior year I took first at Area and State. And sophomore year I did Buying and Merchandising Team Role Play where I got top 20 at Nationals. So today I'm going to be going over some of the tips and tricks I've kind of learned in Innovation Plan to elevate your presentation to the next level. So the things that the judges like, the things that the judges don't like, um, all the different ways to kind of make your presentation really creative. Because I know that innovation plan can be one of the more intimidating events because in terms of the rubric, you only have about you know eight items when compared to other events. You've got a test, you've got the presentation, you've got 15 different items on the rubric. So it seems like an innovation plan, each one of those rubric items is worth a lot more. But as a strong competitor, you should be looking at this rubric as something that's really positive because with such limited rubric items you pretty much have unlimited room for creativity and you can pretty much make this presentation anything you want that's going to give you a competitive edge on your opponent and today that's what i'm going to be going over some of the ways you can get that competitive edge and some of the things that the judges love to see based on you know some of the feedback i've gotten in the past so i'm just going to crack right into it with my first point which i want to talk about what i call the one minute story so one of, the most, one of the most basic mistakes I see people making in innovation plan is they think that there's this one formula. They gotta go, I gotta open up my agenda, then I gotta talk about my product, then I gotta talk about you know, everything on the rubric. But you wanna make this presentation as engaging as possible. So what I like to do is I like to enter with, enter with a little story. Instead of just coming up and being like, today I'm gonna talk about this, this, this. This is my product. You need to bring something in that's going to captivate your audience right from the beginning. That's going to explain the need for your product. As I said right here, one of the things is you want to introduce the why before the what. So you need to make sure that they're interested in the problem and that they're actively seeking solutions in their head before you hit them with the solution with your product. Because if you introduce the product and then you introduce why it's necessary, they're just going to, it's not going to be as compelling of a story. So what I like to do is I like to set the scene. I like to create a little story that they can relate to. And in this story, you wanna, ele you wanna incorporate elements of ethos, pathos, and logos. So you wanna have your facts, you wanna have your emotional appeal, as well as the fact that you wanna have your credibility. So I'm actually just gonna get into it by giving kind of a little example of my presentation from this year. So the product I'm trying to promote is actually, it's a plastic straw cleaner that kind of, it's kind of fits into your sink. And I'm just gonna get into it right now. So first thing you're gonna do, is I just sit down after shaking their hands, I introduce my product, then I go for my asking price. Uh, so right here I say, I'm seeking $100,000 in exchange for 25% equity and a 0.5% royalty. And then I kind of just lay back, I put this picture up and then I kind of let them embrace the scene and then I start the talking. So I'll go, three years ago, an average American has just purchased a refreshing iced coffee to complement the warm summer day. Instinctively, they grab for a plastic straw to enjoy their beverage before throwing that straw in the trash. Back then, nothing was thought of this. Plastic straws were second nature to us. But this has all changed in the past two years, as article after article has been released revealing the sad reality behind these convenient utensils. Defined by ocean pollution and wildlife endangerment, these straws have now become a common enemy. In the United States, 17, you know, and then I start going into my facts, right? I talk about how the, all the cities that have banned straws, the cities that are planning to ban straws. I go into how much the industry has grown. And so by then I've kind of given them that relatable situation, talking about how awareness for plastic straw pollution was pretty low and they probably experienced this themselves. Then I get into the facts. And then after that, I finally cut into the product and describe that before going through all those rubric points. And I'll just a little side fact. I actually, I, I prefer to make my products. So uh, you want to provide like a very specific, a, a very specific um, diagram for them. So Paint 3D is a great tool to do that. Plus with Paint 3D, you can do all these kind of animations where it kind of jumps around your screen, which you know is pretty small, but those little small things look really impressive to judges because it looks like you know what you're doing even though Paint 3D really isn't that hard to use. I have no idea how to use computers. So but basically what you should be getting from that intro 
is you want to be creating the why and introducing your product before you just start boring the most stuff like agenda. So I introduced the why and then my product. And then right after this slide, I'll get into everything I'm covering today and then break through it. So this is just one way to really set yourself apart by coming in extremely strong. Now, once again, you can do whatever you want. There's so many different ways to tell a story. There's so many different ways to produce the need, but you just want to come in strong so that they know they, they've set the bar because that beginning minute of your presentation is going to set the bar for the rest. So moving on from then, the second thing I want to talk about are your finances and numbers and innovation plan. So this is kind of a tricky subject because when you look at your rubric, you're not going to see any, uh, any item for finances. It, there's a little bit that says, you know, feasibility in the conclusion, but it seems like finances is like pretty much left off the rubric. But the one piece of advice I have is that finance is absolutely not optional when it comes to innovation plan. And the more specific and detailed you make it, the farther you're going to go. Because when you're talking to an investor about selling your product, I mean, great, the product's cool. But at the end of the day, an investor's goal is to make as much money as possible. So you need to be telling them how you're going to put money in their pockets and give them a very specific plan so that they are your information seems very reliable to them. So some things I like to do is I like to actually provide some handouts. So I'll give you some examples of those. But really, one thing you want to do is a lot of people will, they'll come in and they'll be like, this is my finance slide. So if you purchase our product, you're going to make a 70% increase, if, or sorry, if you invest in our brand, you're going to make 70% off what you invested. And then they move on to the next slide. It's like, okay, that was not compelling at all because you just made up a number and then you're expecting them to believe it. So instead you want to get specific financial documents. I suggest either cash flow statements or income statements that are going to show where the money's coming in, money coming out, the totals at the end of the year, and then relate that back to your asking price. Show them based on their investment, how much they're going to make each year. So what I like to do is print out these little income statements actually, and I'll go through them specifically. So I have one for the first year and the second year. And as you can see, they're pretty detailed. You go through pretty much all the revenue streams, all the different ways money is coming out. Plus you want to leave some flex money at the bottom just to show them that you accounted for that. Then you're going to get to that bottom total and then relate that back to their asking price. Now keep in mind in this event, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how believable and how much the, uh, how much the investor believes that they're going to make money back because one of the another big mistakes I see is people come out with these products and they say well in the first year I'll probably make a million dollars in profit and the judges are just like I mean most of these people have a financial background they're just like yeah that's physically impossible in fact last year in um last year in innovation plan in my first year I made about negative fifty thousand dollars in income so you don't need to be making tons of money you just need to be creating a realistic estimate. In fact, losing money almost looks more impressive than making money in your first year. So I'm just going to show you how I introduce these, um, these sheets. So one thing I like to do is I'll start off by introducing my revenue streams. Where are you right here? So I'll introduce my revenue streams. I'll come in with, you know, another one of these just paint 3D fancy models. So it's going to look kind of stupid because I'm going to cut through the animations here but you go through each one of these revenue streams and then you want to talk about your business strategy. So in the first year, I go through all my different marketing platforms. I describe how I'm going to sell the product, how it's going to get into the consumer's hands. I talk about how much funding we need, where their investment comes in. And then with that, all of that in mind, I'll introduce your income statement for the first year. So I'll lay this down on the table. I'll walk it through with them. Then I'll leave it in their hands that they have extra time to look into it because in a 15 minute presentation, this can only take about 30 seconds to describing it, but they're going to want to look at that for much longer. Then you'll get into the next year and I'll talk about my kind of strategies in that next year. And then I'll go back into year two and I'll describe that with them. I'll talk about how much money they're going to be making and then I'll go into time for questions because you basically just want to make sure that they believe you, they know, you know what you're talking about. And a lot of people, because this isn't on the rubric, they're not going to talk about finances or they're going to briefly mention it. But if you have a very specific knowledge of what you're talking about, you can bring out those big words because keep in mind, um, these are investors, so they're going to likely know what they're talking about. So you don't have to explain these big words to them. It's going to look pretty impressive and it's going to elevate your game. Now, finally, just for the third thing I want to talk about is visuals. 
So one of the biggest pieces of feedback I've received is when I give handouts, the judges, usually they'll eat that up. You want to be pretty much putting as many physical items into the judge's hands that makes sense. I mean, you don't want to overload them, but you want to give them quite a few. So I'm just going to give you some examples of different uh, props I've made over the years to kind of guide my presentation. So I always want to put the product into their hands in some ways. So for last year, my products were called a Cessair, and it was kind of this uh, Bluetooth monitored air quality filter. And so I provide some, I basically created the apps and I just showed some examples of what the apps would look like. This way they can have this in their hands while I'm guiding my presentation so that they can keep referring back to this. I did the same thing with my product Stronatizer this year where I provided the models of, this, of the uh, product and this is some of the specifications so you really individually break it apart so that while I'm talking, while I discuss a problem, they can look back up this and go, okay, that actually does solve what you're talking about right now. So because instead of, they're not going to have to ask you to, you know, go back so they can see the product again. You want to have a way that they can constantly be looking at the product because that is what you're selling them. Some other examples, just some brochures. This is a nonprofit I partnered up with this year, so I provided some of the uh, statistics on them. And then this, I think, is something that'll constantly elevate your game. There's really no presentation and innovation plan this doesn't work for, which is creating your investment contract at the end. Online, you can just look up investment contract templates. There's gonna to be tons on Word. There's gonna to be tons on, just Google it, and you're gonna find a tons of templates where you can change the names on the template to the name of your company and then provide the specifics. But what I do is I'll, prov I'll print out this investment contract that goes over all the deals of the trade. I'll sign my end and keep in mind, I'll laminate all these props. And then towards the end, after questions, I'll do a little wrap up by explaining, you know, why, why, um, their, why their attention means so much to us, etc. And then I'll try to put this in their hands. One thing to be worried of is you don't want to be aggressive in your investment contract because sometimes I've heard many stories from some of my friends, they'll provide the contract and you'll go, are you willing to sign this? And they'll go, no. And you'll go, you know, that's a pretty awkward situation. So you don't want to try to force them to sign this on the spot. You want to kind of find a way to kind of sneak around that. So what I like to do is I like to talk about, you know, how their time is very, their time is so valuable to us. And we know that it's not fair to get them to sign a contract after just a 15 minute presentation. So instead, what we like to do is we'd like to give you this investment contract, look it over, and by the time we get to our follow-up meeting next Saturday, just set some random follow-up meeting, pretend as if they know about it. We'd love to get this thing signed. You have my email, my, you know, my phone number, call me if you ever need it. I'm happy to answer any questions for you. You have all these handouts right here. You have my written, right? So that instead of just forcing them, you're trying to really show that you care about their, you really, you care about their investment and you want them to feel comfortable. So you're not going to try to, you're not trying to, you're not trying to trick them into anything. You're not trying to force them. You want them to feel that level of comfort before signing with you as a partner, which makes them as a company feel like they really matter or them as an investor. So I feel like they really matter and it'll look a lot stronger than trying to sell it right on the spot. So that's pretty much all I have for you. There's a lot of other kind of small tips and tricks you can also find online, but just a final bonus piece of advice. Just when you, I know this is hypocritical because I, I'm the worst at this. But when you get into that competition er, when you get into that competition arena, whether that's going to be online next year, whether that's going to be in person, just know at that point you are going to have practice as much as you can. There's nothing you can do at that point to change your presentation. So just go into your presentation with confidence. Just go in there thinking, I'm going to absolutely kill this. I'm going to own this. I wish I took that advice my junior year. I tried to live that live to that as much as I could my senior year because you're going to kill it no matter what. So just don't go in thinking that you're going to fail because then you probably will stumble. You'll probably stutter. And then small little errors are going to throw off your presentation. But just go in there with that mentality. You're going to kill it and you're going to do great. So I wish you all the best luck. Innovation Plan is one of the best events. And